Hello everyone, welcome to the Codesultant channel. Today, our topic revolves around the sizing and selection of feeder conductors, overcurrent protective devices, service equipment, grounding rods, and grounding conductors as required by the code. To make it easier for you to comprehend, we will be continuing the project we discussed in my previous videos on how to calculate branch circuits in dwelling units. Our project sample is a dwelling unit that has a plot area of 120 square meters. It has the typical household appliances including one 6 kilowatts electric range, one 4 kilowatts electric clothes dryer, one 4.5 kilowatts storage type water heater, one 1.5 horsepower split type air conditioning unit, three 1 horsepower room air conditioning unit, and one 1.5 horsepower booster pump. For our project, the location of the service entrance will in this location it be mounted in the concrete pedestal, and the main feeder conductors shall be installed underground in non-metallic conduit. The figure shown is the power riser diagram for the project. A concrete pedestal is used to mount the service entrance and other accessories required by the local electrical utility such as kilowatt-hour meter, service head, etc. In this video, we will determine the size of the main feeder conductors, main overcurrent protective device of the dwelling unit panel, the service and service equipment rating. Further, we will also determine the size of the grounding conductor and the size of grounding rod. To determine the sizes of conductors and overcurrent protective devices, the initial step involves calculating the total demanded load. Since the branch circuit load calculation has already been completed in the previous videos, we can now proceed to calculate the overall demand load. When calculating the total demand load, it is essential to consider the following factors. 1. The number of small appliance circuits. This project requires two circuits for small appliances. 2. General lighting load and receptacle outlets. The total load for general lighting and receptacle outlets amounts to 1726 volt amperes. 3. Laundry circuits. The laundry circuits contribute 1500 volt amperes to the overall load. 4. All individual appliance branch circuits. These must be included in the calculation of the feeders and service equipment. Furthermore, it is important to account for future expansion in this sample project allowing for a 20% increase. Thus, when preparing the load schedules, provisions such as spare circuit breakers and conduits should be provided. The rules of the code for feeder and service load calculation shall not be less than the sum of the loads on the branch circuits, and after applying the demand factors permitted in this section, or by optional feeder and service calculation method, or required by farm service calculation have been applied. To understand this section, let's apply this to our sample project. Here are the loads of our sample project. For general lighting, we have 1752 volt amperes, which includes receptacle outlets in general areas, bathroom circuits, garage circuits, and lighting loads. There are two small 20 ampere small appliance branch circuits which is 1500 volt amperes each, laundry circuits at 1500 volt amperes, electric clothes dryer at 5000 volt amperes, electrical cooking range at 6000 volt amperes, one 1.5 horsepower split type air conditioning unit, three 1.0 horsepower room air conditioning units, one 4.5 kilowatts storage water heater, and one 1.5 horsepower booster pump. As stated in section 2.20.3, the rules shall not be less than the sum of all loads after applying the demand factors. Let's determine what are the demand factors for each load. Let's start with the general lighting load, as stated in section 2.20.3.3 general lighting, that the demand factors specified in table 2.20.3.3 shall apply to that portion of the total branch circuit load calculated for general illumination. Table 2.20.3.3 shows the lighting load demand factors for different types of occupancy. For dwelling units we'll take the first 3000 volt amperes at 100%, for the range of 3001 to 12000 volt amperes at 35% demand factor and for the remainder at 25%. While for the small appliance and laundry circuits demand factor is in sections 2.20.3.13a and b, specified in the last sentence that, 
These loads shall be permitted to be included with the general lighting load and subjected to the demand factors provided in Table 2.20.3.3. Let's have an example to understand further. The dwelling unit has a floor area of 400 square meters. It has two 20 amperes small appliance branch circuits and one laundry circuit, determine the total demand factor. The first steps are to determine the general lighting load, for dwelling units, the unit load is 24 volt ampere per square meter. This is in Table 2.20.2.3, General Lighting Loads for All Occupancy. Therefore, the general lighting load is 400 volt amperes multiplied by 24 volt ampere per square meters, which will give us 9600 volt amperes. While for the small appliance and laundry circuits the branch circuit loads will be 1500 volt amperes per circuit, since we have two small appliance branch circuits. Therefore, 2 multiplied by 1500 volt amperes will get 3000 volt ampere, and for the laundry circuit is 1500 volt amperes, since this only one circuit. Therefore, we have a total of 14100 volt amperes, apply the demand factor based on table 2.20.3.3. According to the table, the first 3000 volt amperes are at a 100% demand factor. The range from 3001 to 12000 volt amperes is at a 35% demand factor. This is 9000 volt amperes times 0.35 will give us 3150 volt amperes, and the remaining volt amperes, 12001 to 14100, are at a 25% demand factor. This is 2100 volt amperes times 0.25 is equal to 525 volt amperes. The total demand factor is equal to 3000 volt amperes plus 3150 volt amperes plus 525 volt amperes. Therefore, the total demand factor for the general lighting load in this example is 6675 volt amperes. To continue for other appliances, we can refer to section 2.20.3.14 of the electrical code. Appliance load dwelling units. According to this section, a demand factor of 75% can be applied to the nameplate rating load of four or more appliances that are securely fastened in place. This rule applies to appliances other than electric ranges, clothes dryers, space heating equipment, or air conditioning equipment. It is applicable in one family, two family, or multi-family dwellings where these appliances are served by the same feeder or service. Examples of appliances that are typically fastened in place include garbage disposals, dishwashers, electric water heaters, and similar fixtures. What are the rules for demand factor for electric clothes dryer and electric cooking range? For electric clothes dryers, we can refer to section 2.20.3.15 of the electrical code, specifically, electric clothes dryers, dwelling units. The demand factor for electric clothes dryers can be found in table 2.20.3.15. However, it's important to note that the demand factors listed in table 2.20.3.15 might be more applicable in scenarios where there are more than four dryers. In the context of a one-family dwelling unit, it is unlikely to have such a large number of dryers. Electric ranges and other electric cooking appliances with a rating exceeding 1.75 kW can be calculated using Table 2.20.3.16. This table specifically addresses the demand factors for such appliances. It is worth noting that Table 2.20.3.16 is quite comprehensive, occupying an entire page and accompanied by five explanatory notes. Therefore, to accurately determine the demand factor for electric ranges and other electric cooking appliances, it is necessary to refer to this table and consider the associated notes. For example, what is the demand factor of 9 kW cooking range? Since column B is only up to 8.75 kW, we will refer to column C. If not over 12 kW, the demand factor will be 8 kW. Therefore, for 9 kW electric cooking range shall be 8 kW. Let's apply all of this to our sample project. To calculate the feeder and service calculation for our sample project, we need to consider the area of the dwelling units. The plot area is 120 square meters, but certain areas such as the garage and open porch should be excluded when determining the general lighting loads. Therefore, the effective area is only 73 square meters. For the general lighting load and convenience receptacle outlets demand factor, we have a total of 1,752 volt amperes. Additionally, we have two small appliance branch circuits at 1,500 volt amperes each, totaling 3,000 volt amperes.
We also have one laundry circuit at 1,500 volt amperes. The subtotal of these is 6,252 volt amperes. Applying the demand factor as per Table 2.20.3.3, the first 3,000 volt amperes are at 100% demand, and for the remaining volt amperes between 3,001 and 12,000, the demand factor is 35%. This gives us an additional 1,138 volt amperes. For a 6 kilowatts electric cooking range, according to Table 2.20.3.16, Column B, the demand factor is 80%, resulting in 4,800 volt amperes. Electric clothes dryers have a minimum demand factor of 5,000 volt amperes at 100%. When considering air conditioning units and fastened in place appliances, their loads are taken at their full values. Therefore, we need to account for the following. Water heater. The water heater has a load of 4,500 volt amperes. 1.5 horsepower booster pump. With a full load current of 10 amperes, the booster pump will give us a load of 2,300 volt amperes. 3. 1 horsepower room air conditioning unit. Since we have 3 units with a full load current of 8 amperes each, the total load for these units will be 5,520 volt amperes. 1.5 horsepower split type air conditioning unit with a full load current of 10 amperes the split type air conditioning unit will give us a load of 2300 volt amperes section 2.20.3.14 states that if you have four or more fastened in place appliances a 75 percent demand factor can be applied however air conditioning units space heating equipment electric clothes dryers and electric cookers are not subject to this provision since, only two fasten in place appliance, we cannot apply 75% demand factor. Therefore, our total demanded load is sum of all demanded load plus the load of air conditioning and fasten in place appliances. This will give us 28,558.20 volt amperes. To determine the appropriate sizing of feeder and service conductors, we can refer to the following subsections in the Philippine Electrical Code. For feeder conductors, we can consult subsection 2.15.1.2A1, which provides guidelines for the minimum rating and size of feeder conductors. This subsection establishes the requirements based on the calculated load, as determined by Article 2.20 of the Philippine Electrical Code. Similarly, for service entrance conductors, subsection 2.30.4.3 outlines the sizing requirements. This subsection follows the same principles as feeder conductors, considering the calculated load according to Article 2.20 of the Philippine Electrical Code. Additionally, we can utilize the wiring design example Appendix D of the Philippine Electrical Code as a reference. This appendix, based on Section 2.20.2 of the Philippine Electrical Code, provides practical examples and guidance for branch circuit calculations. Specifically, Section 4.30.2.4 addresses scenarios involving several motors or a combination of motors and other loads. This section offers methods to determine conductor sizes, overcurrent protection, and other necessary requirements for motor loads. Furthermore, Section 4.40.1.7 of the Philippine Electrical Code is relevant when dealing with the highest rated, largest, motor in a group. This section provides guidance on conductor sizing and overcurrent protection selection based on the specifications of the largest motor within the group. Therefore, let's follow the wiring design example and use the formula to determine the minimum ampacity of the conductors. This formula is calculated as 125% of the highest motor rating, plus the full load ratings of all motors, plus all non-motor loads. Or we can use this formula that the total demand current is equal to 25% of the highest motor rating in volt amperes plus total demand load in volt amperes divided by the voltages. In this case, the total demand load is 28,558.20 volt amperes, and the highest rated motor is a 1.5 horsepower booster pump. Using this information, we can calculate the minimum ampacity of the conductors. The calculation is as follows. Minimum ampacity equals 28,558.20 volt amperes plus 25% of 2,300 volt amperes divided by 230 volts. This results in a minimum ampacity of 126.67 amperes using ampacity table 3.10.2.6b16 at 75 degrees Celsius. A 50 square millimeter conductor is suitable for this ampacity. 
However, since a 20% future expansion is to be considered, we multiply 126.67 by 1.20, which gives us 152 amperes. According to the table, a 60 square millimeter conductor is suitable for this higher ampacity. Some of you may be wondering why the factor used is 25% of the highest motor rating. Allow me to clarify. The 100% factor is already accounted for in the total demand load of 28,558.20 volt amperes. The additional factor of 25% is specifically applied to the highest motor rating as part of the calculation to determine the minimum ampacity of the conductors. For feeder protection and service equipment, the formula is calculated as 250% of the highest motor rating, plus the sum of the full load ratings of the motors, plus the sum of all non-motor loads. Or we can use this formula that the total demand current is equal to 150% of the highest motor rating in volt amperes plus total demand load in volt amperes divided by the voltages. The calculation is as follows. Maximum ampacity equals 28,558.20 volt amperes plus 150% of 2,300 volt amperes divided by 230 volts. This results in maximum ampacity of 139.17 amperes. If the rating does not correspond to a standard overcurrent device ampere rating, the next higher standard rating is permitted. Hence, use 150 ampere trip, two pole, circuit breaker. Considering 20% future expansion, we multiply 139.17 by 1.20, which gives us 167 amperes. Hence, use 175 ampere trip, 2 pole, circuit breaker. The reason why this value is 150% of the highest motor rating is because the 100% factor, which represents the maximum motor rating, has already been included in the total demand load of 28,558.20 volt amperes. For the equipment grounding conductor, we will use table 2.50.6.13 for the 175 ampere overcurrent protective device we will use 14 square millimeters. For our sample project, we will use two conductors of 60 square millimeters each, which can be either THW or THHN. For the equipment grounding conductor, we will use one conductor of 14 square millimeters. The overcurrent protection is the 175 ampere trip circuit breaker. However, it is important to note that there seems to be an issue with the ampacity of the 60 square millimeter conductors. Their ampacity is only 155 amperes, while the circuit breaker is set to trip at 175 amperes. In the event of an overload, let's say 170 amperes, the circuit conductor will be overloaded, but the circuit breaker will not trip because its trip setting is higher. Is this installation permitted by the code? The rating of the overcurrent device must be considered when sizing a conductor. In accordance with 2.40.1.4 in the Philippine Electrical Code, conductors, other than flexible cords, flexible cables, and fixture wires, shall be protected against overcurrent in accordance with their ampacities specified in 3.10.2.6, unless otherwise permitted or required in 2.40.1.4a through g. The rules in 2.40.1.4a through g are alternatives. They pertain to power loss hazards, overcurrent devices rated 800 amperes or less, overcurrent devices rated over 800 amperes, tap conductors, transformer secondary conductors, and overcurrent protection for specific conductor applications. Subsection 2.40.1.4b of the electrical code comes into play when choosing an overcurrent device with a rating of 800 amperes or less to safeguard conductors. In certain situations, the ampacity of a conductor may not align precisely with the standard overcurrent device rating specified in the code table 2.40.1.6a. In such cases, it is permissible, unless otherwise prohibited elsewhere in the code, to select the next standard size overcurrent device that is higher than the ampacity rating of the conductors being protected. Therefore, the sizing of 60 square millimeters with an overcurrent protection of 175 ampere trip is permitted if the condition required in subsection 2.40.1.4b are met. What are those conditions? The first condition is, the conductors being protected are not part of a branch circuit supplying more than one receptacle for cord and plug connected portable loads. The 60 square millimeters is not a branch circuit. 
The second condition is, the ampacity of the conductors does not correspond with the standard ampere rating of a fuse or a circuit breaker without overload trip adjustments above its rating. But that shall be permitted to have other trip or rating adjustments. Yes, the 60 square millimeter does not correspond to the standard circuit breaker. For the third condition, the next higher standard rating selected does not exceed 800 amperes. Yes, the standard rating is only 175 ampere trip. Since all conditions are met, we can conclude that 60 square millimeters are permitted to be protected by a 175 ampere trip circuit breaker as specified in subsection 2.40.1.4b. To summarize the sizing requirements for a grounding electrode conductor, GEC, for a single service, the sizing of the GEC should be done in accordance with 2.50.3.17 and Table 2.50.3.17. The minimum size for a copper GEC is 8.0 square millimeters, and it should not exceed 80 square millimeters. If aluminum or copper-clad aluminum GECs are used, they must be a minimum of 14 square millimeters and should not exceed 125 square millimeters. The size of the GEC is determined by the size of the largest ungrounded service entrance conductors or ungrounded derived conductors, e.g., for a separately derived system, or the total equivalent area for parallel conductors. The sizing is based on the conductor size relationship and not on the rating of the circuit breaker or fuse in the service equipment. For example, if 80 square millimeters copper service entrance conductors are installed, the minimum sized GEC would be 22 square millimeters copper or 30 square millimeters aluminum. If 400 square millimeters aluminum service entrance conductors are installed, a 50 square millimeters copper or 80 square millimeters aluminum GEC would be required. If any ungrounded service conductors are sized over 500 square millimeters copper or over 850 square millimeters aluminum or copper clad aluminum, the maximum size for the GEC would be 80 square millimeters copper or 125 square millimeters aluminum or copper clad aluminum conductors. Therefore, for a 60 square millimeters copper service entrance conductor, a grounding electrode conductor of 22 square millimeters would be required. Going back to power riser diagram, the feeder and service entrance conductors should consist of two number 60 square millimeter THW or THHN conductors, along with a 14 square millimeter conductor. For feeder protection, a 175 ampere trip, two pole, 250 volts rated molded case circuit breaker will be used. The same type of circuit breaker will be employed for the service equipment. The grounding electrode shall have a minimum length of 2.4 meters and a minimum diameter of 16 millimeters. Thank you for tuning in. In our next topics, we will discuss optional feeder and service load calculation and electrical system design for multifamily dwelling units. See you then.